Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to talk about baked beans again today. So a couple of days ago, I put out a video talking about how it might make sense to um, be eating more during periods like uh, it has been in the, in the last uh, few days, the last uh, week or so, where the contract balance is really growing at a fast rate uh, and there's a lot of new investments coming into baked beans uh, rather than follow the 6-1 strategy or basically... Uh, essentially defer your payments to to a later date. So that that um, view was based on my understanding of the, the contract and, and how it works and other information I'd seen. But there was a lot of uh, criticism and backlash, I'd say, to that video and a lot of people saying that the conclusions were incorrect because the, the, um, the data I was getting was coming from looking at my uh, account and, and um, you know, they were claiming there's a lot of... Um, you know, referral bonuses going into that account and things like that. So, you know, the, the, the argument that I was making and the, the point I was making in that video wasn't really dependent on um, my own balance and, and my own investment in baked beans. It was based on how the contract actually works. Um, but it was a long video and there was a lot said in that video. And I think that um, I think that point may have been missed because a lot of people were just focusing in on uh, the fact that, that um, you know, I couldn't rule out uh, referrals coming into my account. And to be completely fair, I, I have no way of ruling that out. Um, so I wanted to do this video with, um, you know, to provide some more evidence and to, to really go into a lot of detail here on um, why I still believe that might be the case. Um, and, you know, put a lot of more supporting evidence into it this, this side. And we're really going to do a deep dive um, into baked beans and how it works, uh, get right down into the nuts and bolts, and hopefully you'll understand where I'm coming from and um, the case that I'm trying to make here. Um, you know, so I, I took that video down, uh, I made it unlisted, so you can still access it if you have the link, um, and I did that as a precaution because there was a lot of negative feedback, uh, as I mentioned on the video, a lot of people saying that I was wrong because of X, Y, and Z, and, and it's all about the referrals and that kind of thing, so... Um, the last thing I want to do on this channel is, you know, provide misinformation or mislead people, tell them the wrong thing. So that's not what I want to do. And so as a precaution there, I wanted to err on the side of caution and take that video down, uh, just until I've had a, a chance to really dig into baked beans, uh, a bit more, understand really intimately how it works and to see if that argument still holds up. Um, so I'll probably, I'm not sure if I'll, I'll reinstate that video. I think I might just leave a, a link in the description for this video just to, um, you know, I'd, I'd prefer people go to that video via this one and understand really the context and a bit more of the background of what I'm talking about here. So that that's accessible if you still want it. Um, but what I wanted to do today is, is really do, uh, you know, an absolute deep dive to the nth degree of... Uh, how baked beans works really down to the nuts and bolts, down to the real nitty gritty and try and work out from this, uh, well, what strategies may or may not work and, and what's it all about. Um, and, um, you know, go from there. So it's, it's, this is going to be a very long video. I think probably going to be a lot longer than the last video. Um, and so, you know, I'll put some chapter headings in the in the video, so feel free to skip around if you need to. But I think you get the most benefit from watching it. If you if you have an interest in understanding how baked beans works, um, and really kind of maximizing that that information can do nothing else but apart from maximize um, your your profits and um, interaction with the with the contract. So I would recommend watching the whole thing if you have time. But obviously, um, you know, do what you need to do. All right, so um, let's start with just an outline of what I'm going to talk about. So I'll just, um, as I said, this is this is going to be an extremely deep dive. We're going to get really detailed here. So um, it's going to get very technical. There's going to be a lot of code. There's going to be a lot of maths. We're going to just we're going to really talk about how things work, how the algorithm calculates um, beans and miners and what all that means and what that that means for for returns. So. Um, you know, I don't expect many people will, will sit through this whole thing, but, um, hopefully this information is, is, uh, use, useful for some of you. Um, so we're going to start with essentially a full code analysis and, 
what I did was step through the code, essentially line by line, looking at each function, what it does, um, how it works, what kind of calculations it's doing, and then trying to, to kind of, um, you know, break that down to its components. And what that did for me is to clarify a lot of, a lot of myths that were surrounding baked beans. A lot of people talk about certain features that it has. Um, you know, one example of this is the, um, the referral bonuses, how they're paid, um, it, basically the, the information on the website, on Baked Beans website is incorrect about how referrals are paid and what they, um, you know, the amounts that are paid, um, and, and, and basically some other myths around, or, or, you know, I'll call them pseudo myths or, or semi misinformation about, well, what, what does the anti-whaling mechanism do and what is it, does it actually exist? Um, it's really clarified a lot of those questions for me. So I'm hoping it'll do the same for you. Um, then we'll go into a functional overview, really just stepping through what happens when you buy, uh, bake, rebake, sorry, and, and sell, uh, what actually happens functionally with the, with the application. We can, we can look at that in that section and we're going to take a deep dive into the buy and sell algorithms, how they work, what the different values of, um, selling your beans at different times. How does that mean? How does that, um, uh, essentially affect the, the the amount that you get out when you sell at different times. Um, and we're going to look at some of the potential buy and sell scenarios. Like if you buy, if you sell earlier, if you sell later, what what um, is the bearing on the contract balance to the amount of BNB you get back when you sell. And as I said, we're going to look at some baked beans facts and myths. So I'm going to go back to the FAQ and give my opinion on what I think is uh, is true, what I think is misleading, and what I think is is uh, flat out false. Um, we're going to look at baked beans as compared with other miners, which it's forked from essentially. So really simple, um, you know, really similar, I should say, uh, applications. What, is, what are the differences in the code? And does that uh, make a difference to the functionality of baked beans? Um, and then we're going to look at baked beans versus other miners that are similar in terms of performance and work out what we can learn from that. I'm going to talk briefly about the impact of the BCT token on sustainability and what my thoughts are on that, and then just close out. So look, there's a, there's a lot to cover. This is going to be a very long, uh, video. So sit back and I, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you find some um, some value out of this. Uh, again, in my opinion, going through this exercise and really getting into the nuts and bolts really kind of um, taught me a lot about how this uh, this contract works and, and how to, to kind of get some extract value out of it. You know, ideas around how um, sustainable it is and, and uh, what kind of future it has. So I think that um, that, that will be very uh, informative if you're interested in baked beans. All right, let's get started with the code analysis. So um, this is going to be very technical and very detailed. I'm going to go through line by line of, of the, uh, the key functional components um, and just talk about what they do, how they calculate. So if um, this is not for you, feel free to skip to the ne next section in which I'll give an overview, but I think it's worth understanding if you are really interested. I haven't seen any other videos out there that actually do this, so uh, hopefully this will be of use to someone. So I just want to clear up, clear up some terminology, which we see again and again in the contract. Um, there's terminology that is used. It's very confusing. What's an egg? What's a miner? Uh, the word beans is, is only used in one function, I believe in the, in the contract. Um, so essentially you can think of them like this. So an egg is a, is basically a measure of rewards that you accumulate. So, uh, every day you make a certain number of eggs. And, and this terminology goes back to the original egg game that um, the baked beans is cloned off. So basically every day you're, you're awarded a certain number of eggs and the number of eggs you get is based on a couple of things. It's based on uh, essentially what the, the egg payout rate of the, the contract is. So how many eggs basically are created every day um, and how many miners you have. So a miner is essentially a bean. So for this um, uh, for this contract, they've they've basically called miners beans. And don't that get that confused because it's um, you you might think that eggs are beans or or whatever. No, actually miners 
uh, beans in this terminolo terminology, and an egg eggs are a representation of your rewards since you've last claimed rewards, either rebaked them or eaten them. That's what an egg is, and a bean is a miner. So essentially, what the miners are when you uh, invest in baked beans, you get allocated a and a number of miners, and those miners are used to determine how many eggs you get a day. That's basically how it works. Um, and um, all right, so let's have a look at how the contract is initiated. I think it's it's useful to go back to the start and look at the um, uh, at the initiation and what the variables are at at um, at initiation. So the the contract is actually initiated through the seed market function. Um, and essentially what that function does is sets market eggs, the market eggs variable uh, to 108 billion. So market eggs is a really important variable and it's it's a single value for the whole contract. It's not, it's not a per user um, value and it's a really important one. And essentially market eggs... Um, tracks the the total uh kind of kind of indication of the total number of eggs that have been bought sold uh you know rebaked whatever it happens to be it's it's kind of an indication of if if nothing more the investment in the um in the contract and how long it's been around it's a value that keeps going up and we'll talk about it in more detail because it has a lot of bearing on how much money you get and how many eggs that you get from the contract all that kind of thing so that's initialized at the at the start of the contract at 108 uh, billion. Um, we've also got this eggs to hatch miners variable, and what that means is that's how many sorry eggs to hatch one miners. That's how many eggs you need to trade for one miner. So basically, that's the the ratio of eggs, which are your rewards that you make every day, to beans, which are you know your miners essentially in, in the terminology. Um, so essentially you need, um, you know, over a million eggs to make one bean. That's, that's the, the ratio. So, um, these, the other variables that are initiated at the contract open. So we've got PSN, PSNH. I'm actually not sure what they stand for, but we'll see them in the, um, the formula, um, later down the track and they're initialized at 10,000 and 5,000 respectively. We'll see how they um, affect the values later on. We've got a dev fee of 3% and at the right at the beginning, initialized is false. When the contract owner runs the seed market uh, function, initialized is uh, becomes true and the contract for all intents and purposes becomes active with that initial market eggs value of 108 billion. Okay, there's a lot, lot of information here and I'm going to talk you through it. So what we have here, I've just tried to break these down visually, these functions into little boxes. So we've got one function here that is called buy eggs. Now this is what function, this is the function that gets called when you go to the website and uh, essentially invest. That's called bake eggs. Um, that's what uh, essentially comes, uh, that is what is called from the website onto the contract. So uh, buying eggs is the same as baking beans, not rebaking. That's baking beans or initially investing. Now this this flow um, basically explains what happens when you invest in the contract new. All right, so we're going to look at the function buy eggs. What it does, I'm not going to read every line of code for you, but I've broken down on the left, in the left box for each of these functions, what the code says and numbered each component uh, in that. And then on the right, I've made a, just a short comment about what that um, code is actually doing. And then in the inputs, I've just called out what is actually being input into this function. So this function uh, accepts as an input the, an amount. So that's the amount that you're investing and the, the address that your, the, your referral address, whoever referred you to uh, baked beans. So what this function does is make sure that the contract is initialized um, and it essentially uh, sets the eggs bought variable. So what that does is call the calculate egg buy function, which then calls the calculate trade function and works out how much um, you should be getting in eggs based on 
the amount of money that you invest. So interesting thing here is within the whole be the, the whole bake beans function, the whole um, function that allows you to invest, you don't actually get any beans through this function. You only get eggs. And then this is handed off at the end to hatch eggs, a uh, different function, the same one that you use when you hatch eggs. And that is what actually gives you beans or miners. So when you bake beans, the, the, there's a calculation that happens um, that works out how much you are going to get in, in eggs. Um, using this ratio, this, this uh, formula, which, um, so I'll just look at this box here. So this is the code of that formula, translated that to a simple equation, put that in a readable format where we've got PSN times BS over PSNH. And you can see those variables that were initialized coming back um, here, and this is where they're used. And so this big one here shows you exactly how that relationship is calculated between um, you know, the number of market eggs, which again, we'll talk about in more detail, um, and versus the contract balance and the amount invested. So there's a lot to say about this formula and we'll talk about it. I'll go through this in a lot more detail, um, coming up, but essentially what this does is attempts to equalize the amount of, uh, eggs and therefore beans that you get when you, um, buy into baked beans, no matter if you kind of come on to baked beans on day one or day a hundred, you basically get roughly, um, not the same amount of, of, of beans or eggs, but proportional to market eggs, which, and, and proportional to the contract balance. So, um, the amount of money that you spend into the contract, it helps equalize that the basic value that you get, um, uh, when you, when you cash out. So you're not kind of putting money in and not getting a return. You should, it should equalize it to that starting kind of 8% roughly. So that, that's a really good way of maintaining balance, uh, and, and keeping things uh, more or less fair for new investors. So that's a, definitely a, a good feature of the contract. Okay. So at this time we're calculating how many eggs that, that, that are due when you buy. Um, and what else are we doing? We are subtracting the dev fee, the 3% dev fee from the amount of eggs that you purchase. Um, and then we're transferring that, uh, you know, capturing the 3% dev fee of also the amount. So you don't, you also subtract the, the dev fee from the eggs to make sure that your eggs are slightly lower. Then you subtract the dev fee from the BNB that you input into the, uh, contract and you transfer that dev fee back to the dev. That's part of this function as well. Um, and then we set claimed eggs, uh, sorry, send, we send, um, we set the claimed eggs variable to zero. Uh, so hang on a second. Sorry, not to zero. We set the claimed eggs variable to whatever this calculation is, plus what was already in this wallet. So this is basically if you, already have some eggs in your wallet and we'll say in your wallet, it's not, it's not technically like that, but it, where eggs that you have available to claim, and then you kind of invest more. This is just making sure that you're not wiping out your previous value. You're just adding to whatever you've already got sitting in your um, account. Um, so basically the last thing that happens is we call hatch eggs, passing the referrer address. So, um, you know, basic summary here of what, what, it actually happens when we bake beans. There's a calculation that works out the number of eggs that will be bought based on the value of market eggs, the amount invested and the contract balance. That's this uh, formula here at the time of purchase. And then we take out 3% of the beans to account for the dev fee. We transfer the dev fee to the owner in BNB and update the amount of claimed eggs held by the originating eggs. And then we call hatch eggs, passing the referral address in order to pay the referral fee and do something with the eggs. So, you know, once again, you put money in, you get eggs and you don't get beans yet. So the other thing, important thing to remember is um, that this calculation of how many eggs that you get and how many um, beans that you get is done at the time of purchase. And this is going to be different uh, based on when you come into the contract. So again, we'll look at this in more detail, but just remember that when you, when you buy, there's a calculation, how many eggs you get, you get the eggs as part of the baked beans, um, function. And then this hands off to the hatch eggs function, which we'll look at next. 
Okay, so the hatch egg function is essentially, well, it is the, the rebake beans function. So if you click on rebake beans on the website, it will uh, execute the hatch eggs function. Um, and as I said, the hatch, hatch eggs function already will be run at the end of the bake beans function so that when you have a new investment, uh, it basically runs this directly after. So let's see what that looks like. So imagine you've just bought, you've just invested in baked beans and you, you've hit um, baked beans, put some money in and what you've got is some eggs, not yet beans. So this gets handed off to um, the next function, which is rebaked beans. And the first check that happens is the referrer uh, address check. And what that is doing is, is checking that, that you haven't just put your own address as the referrer address. Um, and basically if, if you, if you have, then it will set it to a kind of a, a null value. Um, but it, there's also some logic there that allows you to change the referrer address. If you had it changed to a null value and then you were to uh, insert a referrer address, you could then change your referrer address, um, by that logic. So this is just a, a basically a referrer check. Um, so so the next step is um, essentially a a call out to try and work out how many um, eggs that you have in the account. So if you had just um, accumulated eggs, you're going to have eggs basically sitting there attached to your account. So this function read get my eggs returns the number of eggs that you currently hold. So if you've just invested. Um, and just being given a bunch of eggs, they're going to be in there as well. But then it also needs to calculate how many eggs have been, um, you know, hatched uh, essentially under this terminology. So, and, and what that means is how many, how many eggs have been generated by the algorithm and are claimable by you since the last time you uh, essentially claim them. So since the last rebake or since the last sale, how many eggs have you, um, have you, uh, got available to claim. So the way it works out, that is essentially there's a calculation based on how much time has passed uh, since the last block in in seconds. Um, and basically for this, it's you the, the number of eggs as a raw value is essentially the number of seconds between right now and the last time you claimed. Now that's the number of number of um, eggs. And then to get that. Um, um, normalized back through your, uh, your beans, it multiplies that value against hatchery miners for the user. So hatchery miners is, uh, essentially the variable that tracks how many beans you have. So hatchery miners equals beans. We, we step one, we work out how much time has passed in seconds since the last hatch, um, since you've last claimed and then multiply that number of seconds by how many beans you have. And that's how many eggs you've got. So we take that number of eggs that you've accumulated since your last action, add the number of eggs that are sitting in your wallet, um, say from, um, you know, the, the fact that you've just bought or the fact that you've received a referral uh, bonus. Um, and then it's going to pass these two back to the next, um, the next function. Oh, sorry, the next uh, line. And the next line, number four, what it does is calculate really the number of um, beans that you get. So you can see set new miners to the number of eggs that we've calculated here, um, divided by how many eggs it takes to hatch one miner. And we saw that value right at the start, 1.08 uh, million. So that's, that's basically what it does. It divides the total number of eggs that you've accumulated here by the total number of um, eggs required to hatch one bean or miner and, as, and gives you beans equal to, um, to that value. So this is, this is the point at which, uh, if you've bought and, um, it's gone to this function, this is the point at which basically you get allocated your new beans in line five here, update hatchery miners, which is, which is the variable that is the number of beans you have for the user. So hatchery miners plus the number of new miners that came from here is your updated minor value. Um, and then the next step sets the number of available eggs back to zero. So obviously you can't keep claiming the same eggs over and over again. You've already claimed those. So we set the number of eggs to zero. We set the last hatch in the current block um, 
also to whatever now is. So now that means next time you run this, it'll it'll uh, update your your um your last we'll record this current time as your last hatch date. So this um just kind of makes sure that this all works. And then this line eight sends the referral eggs. And this is interesting because the way that this function works is basically um, it takes the total number of eggs that you've claimed and divides them by eight and sends that back to the referrer in eggs. So interesting for a couple of reasons. It, it doesn't actually send BNB back to the referrer. So for, for other lots of other um, types of contracts, referrers get kind of a bonus in uh, in tokens or in the base currency, here they get a refer. They get some um, rewards paid back in uh, eggs, which are then converted to beans when they rebake or they sell. Um, so that's uh, that's interesting, and it's it's not um, you know really clear necessarily. I think a lot of people are thrown off by that. The other interesting thing is the actual amount of the referral. I think it's it's usually quoted at twelve percent. But it's actually a straight divide by eight, which is 12.5%. So it's slightly different. Um, but this is, for me, this was a, a bit of a concern because, uh, so f firstly, the it's very different to what it says on the Baked Beans FAQ, where it says 12% uh, of 3%, which is a, a pretty low and, and, you know, you'd say sustainable amount of referrals. Um, normally a referral is paid when you invest. So if somebody invested, invests, you get that referral bonus back to you. We're talking about now with Baked Beans getting a referral bonus that is paid as 12.5% um, of the initial investment and then 12.5% of every subsequent rebake, um, which is, is huge. It's a huge amount of referral. Um, and it's not just huge because, um, you know, a few people will get paid out consistently in quite a large uh, amount relatively as a percent, but this is open to abuse. Like if you, if, if you were to create um, a second wallet and basically refer, create a, you know, your first wallet, just, just put a really small amount of um, investment in and then your second wallet referred by the first wallet with your main investment in you'd be getting an additional 12.5% back in your in your wallet from each um from each uh basically each rebake so there are i would expect a lot of people who who have looked at this and have worked out how it's how it works who are basically just getting an extra 12.5% on top of um the amount that they should be getting so yeah, not not only is the um, the referral rate a lot higher than what they say in their FAQ and in their in their material, it is really open to abuse because by referring yourself, every time you rebake, you could be just making another twelve point five percent of your rebake, putting that back into your wallet from where you, and from there you can just rebake that or you can you can eat it whatever you want. You're just kind of making money on top of money. And what does that do? That drains the balance. So that's um, kind of a, a bit of an issue. And in future versions, I, it's something I would um, hope that they that they would correct to a much more reasonable value. All right. Now, number nine, increase the market eggs variable by adding the amount of eggs baked divided by five. So this is this market eggs variable that we'll, we'll talk about in a lot of detail. Um, essentially, you're just, in, you're just tracking the fact that more eggs came into the system something happened to more eggs and you're kind of increasing that ever growing market eggs variable that is used uh, back here and, and also on the sell end to make sure that you equalize the amount of um, uh, beans, essentially value of beans that you get at entry um, at the entry point. Okay. So let's just look at the summary of what happens when you rebake. So you check the referrer's address to make sure it's not your own wallet and then address the, update the referrer's address if it was previously blank. Calculate the number of eggs that should be received by the user based on the hatch rate, eggs to hatch, hatch one miners, and the time passed since the user's last rebake or sell. So that value is multiplied by the number of beans you have and stored against your address. Uh, if there are any eggs added from referral, 
um, bonuses there added to the above total. So, you know, if, if you are a referrer, you receive that um, eggs, those eggs just to, you, to your um, address. And when you run the rebake beans or indeed the sell beans, it, it uh, counts those eggs at that point and they're, they're converted either to, to more beans or to BNB. Um, so number four, increase the user's hatchery minor beans uh, value by the number of eggs hatched above. So basically uh, gives you more beans. This is the mechanism that when you rebake, you get more beans. Number five, we reset the amount of unclaimed beans for the user to zero and the last rebake or sell time to the current block. So essentially preventing you from just keeping on rebaking the same beans uh, or the same eggs, I should say. Increase the number of eggs in the referrers holding by adding 12% of the amount of eggs baked. And this was another interesting part to me that you're not actually subtracting 12.5% of the eggs that you're converting to beans. You're just uh, creating an extra 12.5% um, and sending those back to the originating or the refer wallet, um, which is interesting that, that that wasn't kind of um, accounted for. It's not like a percentage of the amount that you rebate goes into that wallet. It's just like a percentage on top that comes from, from nowhere. So that's, uh, that's interesting too. And number seven, increase the market egg variable by adding the amount of baked divided by five. Okay, so let's go to the third and final function. So here I'm, I'm looking at, um, we've looked at what happens when you buy. We've looked at what happens when you rebake. Now let's look at what happens when you eat or sell. So when you sell, the contract calls that same function that basically works out how many eggs that you have. Um, and this is the, exactly the same logic there. It works out if you've got eggs sitting in your... Um, against your address or if um you know if you've bought new eggs and haven't done anything since with well actually if you've bought new eggs they will be rebaked automatically but it just it just checks anyway how many eggs that you're owed essentially using that same call out there um so that's that's part two number three we'll calculate how much bnb are going to be given back to you for the eggs that you have and it, that that uses this function called calculate sell eggs so Essentially, part one is that calculate egg sell basically calls calculate trade um, using these variables. So we're, we're inputting eggs, market eggs, and contract balance. So you'll notice this is actually the same function, calculate trade that's called when you sell and calculate trade that is called when you buy. But what is different are the amounts that get um, allocated to that. So, so for when you buy, the inputs are going to be the amount, the contract balance, and the market eggs. Uh, in that order. And when you sell, it's going to be the uh, eggs, market eggs and contract balance. So essentially it's kind of a reversal of that uh, first function. Um, and, and what that does is basically kind of something similar. It, it adjusts the sell value of your eggs based on um, factors, the, the most important factors being the contract balance and the market eggs. Um, so you'll probably think, you know, looking at all this, the key really is in this, in this function, this is the, the, the heart of the entire, uh, contract of how baked beans works is the way that it calculates, um, you, what you're owed in, in eggs slash beans when you buy and what you're then owed in BNB when you sell. And it's that relationship between contract balance and market eggs that I think is important to understand and helps you work out if there are ways to, to maximize uh, returns. All right, so the next thing that happens is, is there's a dev fee that's calculated um, and that's paid a little bit further in the function, but essentially 3% of your um, um, amount is... Uh, sorry, three percent of the fee is is taken off the number of eggs that you have, and then uh, that amount in BNB is also transferred back to the dev. So, you know, just to clarify, there is a dev fee paid on um, on buy and on sell as well. Um, and then the others, the other parts are pretty similar. We we set the number of eggs back to zero, the last hatch back to the current um, block. And then we adjust market eggs again. So remember market eggs tracks basically a um, some sort of derivative of the total number of eggs that have ever existed and then and then been sold and and um, or, or baked. Uh, so that that number is increased. Um, and then the the transfer of the egg value to the user. So this is basically the the BNB goes into your wallet and um, 
and uh, minus the, the dev fee. So that's what happens when you sell. Um, and, and we'll talk a little bit about how this affects the, once again, market eggs in, in um, a little bit, because that, that, that is really critical here. Market eggs and the contract balance relationship, understanding how all that works is really important. All right. So the next slide, understanding market eggs. So market eggs starts at a high value when the contract is initiated. What I mean by that is it's not zero. We saw when it's initiated, market eggs is set at this value, which is 108 billion. Um, and then it increases whenever eggs are hatched or sold, right? So so there's three functions where, where market um, eggs are in, um, increased. So at, in seed market, which is the very first function, the initiating function, it's set to 108 billion. Then whenever you hatch eggs, um, that can be either through a buy, because remember when you buy um, beans or when you invest in beans, you it calls the hatch eggs function. So any amount of um, money going into baked beans or uh, getting reinvested or, or rebaked, however you want to call it, calls hatch eggs and basically that increases the market eggs um, divided by five. But when you sell eggs, it actually increases the amount of market eggs directly, right? So that's the, the key difference. And um, so when you when you buy or when you rebake, my market eggs goes up by the amount that you buy or rebake divided by five. And when you sell, it goes up just by the number divided by nothing. So it's five times greater when you sell and this is, I think, the, the origin of the whole six to one um, uh, buying and selling, um, sorry, rebaking and selling um, plan, because essentially, you know, if you're, if you're doing this five times, um, it's, it's equivalent to doing this one time, right? Um, roughly speaking, that, that's, that's, uh, that's the relationship. So I think that the theory there is if you do this six times, you do this once, you're going to be increasing, um, you're going to kind of be, be staying ahead of um, the, the market eggs and maintaining the value of your eggs over time. So th while that is true, there are, remember, two sides of this equation. There is the contract balance uh, and there are market eggs. There are two key variables here that need to be considered. So it's not just the market eggs that you need to control for, it's also the contract balance. Yeah. And don't worry, we will talk about that as well. So, um, all right. So now that we've gone through the code, kind of developed a, a good understanding of what it's doing and, and some understanding of what these key variables are and key functions are, uh, let's have a look at the, the basically the functional model. Uh, and actually, before we do, I just want to mention that um, I, I'm only showing these three processes, the the um, the buy, the bake, or the rebake, and the sell. Um, and there are other functions on the contract, but they're not directly responsible for uh, how the, the economy works. Um, so there tend to be read functions that let you work out, uh, you know, how much money or how many, how much BNB is owed to you based on the, um, the amount that you have. So they're not really relevant. The only ones that are relevant are these three, uh, and the ones that they call. So that's what I'm focusing on. All right. So to the functional overview now, and this first proce process is the buy process for, um, baked beans. And that's also called baked beans on the website. This is what happens when you invest, all right? So what happens um, when you invest? The um, Essentially, the user submits an amount. The calculate egg buy function on the baked beans contract will work out how much uh, eggs to assign to you. And that allocation is made um, looking at the contract balance and market eggs. And those are those two important variables that we talked about. Um, and then an assignment is made back to the user's uh, account of eggs. So as I said, there is, there is no beans that are given as part of this function. You just get eggs uh, straight up. The other thing that happens is money comes out of your wallet. So BNB comes out of your wallet. 97% of that BNB goes onto the contract balance. 3% of it goes to the owner. Now I've got this gray dotted line here uh, to represent the referral. Um, because I want to make, make it clear that yes, when you deposit, 
there is a referral bonus that's not handled by the buy function that's handled um, when this is um, handed off to the rebake function. But essentially, functionally, when you buy 12% um, of the eggs that are calculated for you to buy, an additional 12%, not 12% that comes off your eggs, but an additional 12% are, um, you know, go back to the referrer. And actually, a, a, a small clarification, because um, here I'm using the terminology that the beans have, or, or the amount that the beans have called out. So this is actually 12.5%, not 12%. Uh, baked beans have said 12%, but it's actually 12.5%. So 12.5% additional eggs go to the referrers, um, you know, allocated to the to the referrer. And then when they do something like uh, rebake or sell, they that's when something happens to those eggs in the same way as, as would happen to, to you when you get, um, uh, when you do your, your rebake. Okay, so that's the bake function. Now this next slide is the rebake function. So what happens when you, uh, either after you buy, how do the beans get converted? Sorry, how do the eggs get converted to beans? Or when you rebake, how do your eggs get converted to beans? All right, so the get my eggs function here will work out how many eggs that you have. And the way it does that is to work out the new eggs that you've accumulated since the large ha last hatch and uh, multiply that by the number of beans that you have. So hatchery miners. So that's where beans come into play. It works out your new eggs and um, the last hatch beans times the, uh, sorry, the last hatch eggs times the beans, right? So if you're, if this is just your first time rebaking after the deposit and you don't yet have any beans, what it does will just take the total number of eggs that you've bought and then convert those to beans using that 108 billion um, to, to one number. Um, so it's a straight conversion of eggs into beans. But if you've already got beans, it'll essentially, um, and you've just accumulated eggs, it will convert only those eggs into beans. So essentially your, your eggs on this transaction decrease to zero because remember your eggs are just your essentially your unclaimed rewards. So they'll decrease to zero. You'll get an amount of beans that um, the algorithm is, has calculated and the amount of beans is um, sorry. And then the, so this increases and then the number of market eggs is also increased by this algorithm. And remember, this is the, the increase in the number of eggs that you've um, basically got here divided by five. And that's the increase there. Um, and this is the point that the, the referral bonus is really paid. So that 12% goes back to the referrer at this point. Okay. All right. And, and the final process here is the eat beans process. Um, so it's a kind of, it's very similar to both of the other processes combined. Uh, the get my eggs function again, works out how many eggs you have based on how many are just sitting there in your assigned to your address, plus how many you should be owed based on how much time has passed since your last hatch times the number of beans that you have. Um, and then on, based on the number of eggs that you have times that number of beans that you have, which is kind of your, your power to um, yield returns, it then calculates the, the price of the, the, the cell. And that goes back to that function that I showed you earlier, where it looks at the contract balance and the number of market eggs, the value of market eggs. Uh, determines a value uh, for your cell. It sends 97% of that back to your wallet and 3% of that back to the owner in fees. So that's pretty much it for the functional view. I hope that kind of makes sense between those three processes. Um, so what I want to do now is look into the detail of these buy and sell calculations and um, really work out how they work and, um, you know, the relationship between those two variables and how it affects the outcome. And so I've put together some scenarios um, and tried to uh, essentially highlight this. So I'll, I'll step through each one of these scenarios. And so we've got on the left, we've got the buy scenarios. On the right, we've got the sell scenarios and you can see that the, the formula for each of those is displayed up above. Um, all right, so what happens at initiation? So this first scenario is just basically day one. The contract has just been initiated. Contract balance is zero, and I want to invest one BNB. And this amount represents one BNB in, in way, um, which is a division of BNB. 
um, that is used for these calculations. So this is basically saying, all right, so when I, when I deposit my, I'm, I'm the owner or I'm the very first person putting money into the contract balance, the market eggs is at its, at its um, uh, starting rate. I'm going to get this amount of eggs back using this formula. And you can see in scenario two, after the first deposit, the market eggs variable has increased because um, of the deposit. And remember, it increases by one fifth of the number of eggs um, that were in that transaction. So, you know, this is not exactly what it, what's going to be on the on the chain because this is a hypothetical transaction. But just to demonstrate the fact that, well, after you've done one transaction, um, you know, after that deposit, the market eggs has gone up, the contract balance has gone up, um, and if you were to make another deposit after the first deposit, the amount of eggs that that um, that you get from your second deposit has gone uh, down. You can see from the from the first um, from the first one there. So, the, the, these are measures just to kind of control um, the balance and and the amount of buying power that, that um, your your um, money has in eggs and and you know it fluctuates in this way. So, looking at the sell contracts, there's obviously no sell that you can make at the at initiation when there's no money on the contract. But let's say um, I've made this first deposit on day two, and um, then I immediately want to uh, withdraw my uh, or, or or make a um, a sell. Now, in these sell scenarios, I want to call out that I've used a generic eight percent return um, in um, eggs, which is just an approximation. Basically, the it's impossible to calculate this real scenario based on um, complex factors. Um, so just to take a, a kind of a rough approximation, if I'm selling 24 um, hours later with right with 8% um, there based on similar market values, I'm getting a, a roughly 6% return. So this is just a, a step through of the um, the process and this is not meant to be, be exact. It is really impossible, especially when we're looking at these next scenarios, when we're looking at uh, actual calculations from the contract to work out um, the rates because th there's it's going to be dependent on um, the amount of uh, of beans that you have and and your actual return rate. So so just try to approximate those things that are, that are unknown and focus on the two um, things that that I wanted to highlight in this model and that is the contract balance and the market eggs and how they impact your uh, potential returns here. So for scenario three on the buy side, um, what I've done here is looked at the contract balance at a point in time. So this is on the 7th of April, uh, went back to the contract balance and, and found the, the exact figure from that and took that to be the point in time. And at the same time, I did a, uh, a call to a uh, read call on the contract to work out uh, basically to perform this function and get the contract itself to run this function based on the inputs that I put in there. So from that, um, I, I put in an amount of one BNB um, and, and told it what the contract balance was. And it, it gave me an amount of eggs. Um, and from this, I was able to calculate the market eggs. Um, so you can see there that's calculated. So at the 7th of April, I could work out that the market eggs at that time was this value and you can see how much it's gone up from uh, initiation. It's gone up a lot. It's actually, I don't think there's a direct way of finding out market eggs from the contract. There's no query that you can run, but I found a way to run that indirectly via, uh, you know, just using this, um, um, this read function and then reversing the, um, the contract to solve essentially for that, um, for that market eggs variable. All right. So what's that telling us? Well, right now it's saying that, well, if I were to buy on the 7th of April and put in one BNB, I would get this number of eggs. Um, remember, this is not beans. This is, this is eggs. Um, and that number is much higher than it was on day one. And the reason for that, obviously, is the fact that um, of this constant inflation of the market eggs amount, so the market eggs is constantly getting bigger and you can imagine when the numerator is getting bigger, the overall number that you get back is getting bigger. Um, market eggs never goes down. It's always high. 
So that number goes up and this is this is the mechanism to compensate for uh, people coming into the contract late and of course rebaking um, and that kind of thing. So that's why the the further you go along in time, the higher the um, uh, you know your purchasing power essentially from the contract. All right, so on the sell side, this um, this form this function here is intended basically to be a control. So uh, once again, I'm not calculating the exact rate of return based on the amount of um, eggs that you have uh, and, and the rebake period. I don't think it's necessary to do so. I'm just trying to highlight the relative uh, returns based on this scenario. So um, look, let's let's assume here that your eggs you're you're getting a return on eight percent of your of the eggs that you received here. And, you know, assuming that the contract balance is the same as it was under this scenario, assuming the market eggs is the same as it was in this scenario, obviously these numbers fluctuate all the time, but just as a baseline, as an indi as a kind of baseline to compare these other scenarios against, um, I'm showing just a return of three, um, you know, 0.03% return just on this baseline scenario. If, we're, if you're kind of selling the same day as you're buying at a certain percentage of your, your sales, the contract balance hasn't gone up, the market eggs hasn't hasn't gone up. It's kind of just a, a rough baseline there. Yeah. And what that re return is reporting is the percentage that this number is against this initial amount of one BNB. So um, that's, that's what that, um, what that shows. So these next scenarios, um, I'm taking from this point in the contract, like what happens if on, um, after this point sometime very shortly after, like in the next day or two, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm, I'm not controlling for anything apart from just the, the market eggs and contract balance, just to demonstrate how the, the relationship between these two can change and how that affects the payout or the, the, um, the buy in eggs. So let's take a look actually on the buy side first. Um, so scenario four is high new investments. Essentially, if you're saying that um, there's an increase in contract balance of 30% above the previous scenario, but the market eggs have only gone up 10%, which is kind of roughly speaking what, what would happen if a lot of people are buying um, at one time. You know, those numbers may not be exactly the same, but it's it's just intended to to show the difference between those um, those scenarios and what impact they have. So essentially, if, if, if the, the contract balance raises at a higher rate than, than market eggs, you're essentially getting fewer eggs per BNB. So um, what this says to me is basically if, you're, if the contract balance is rising um, very quickly, it's probably not the best time to buy because, because relatively speaking, um, the amount of eggs that you're getting on buy is, is lower than... Uh, for example, this baseline scenario. Um, conversely, what happens if the new investments are low? Um, so, you know, there's not much coming into it. We've got we've got a 10% increase above scenario three in the contract balance. So, you know, not that much money, but market eggs are going up by 30%. So this is the kind of scenario you'd expect if a lot of people are already invested, if a lot of people are rebaking their... Um, their beans and not that many people are coming onto the, the contract with them, um, you know, uh, new, new money. Well, what happens is you get a much higher purchase of eggs than you would, um, in these other scenarios. So that's, that, um, you know, re reflects, I guess, the incentive that, um, the contract tries to, to give for new buyers, um, at a time when the contract balance is, de is declining or, you know, more specifically when the contract balance has, uh, sorry, when the, uh, market exit value is high, representing a, uh, you know, the contract has been all around for much longer. So scenario five is extremely high new investments. Now, what happens if, um, you know, like we've seen recently, it's been almost an exponential growth, like over a period we're seeing kind of, let, let's just say 40% increase in market eggs because the new um, money coming on definitely does trigger an in increase in market eggs through that um, rebate function, but the contract balance is growing much larger. And remember that this is a, um, you know, you're dividing the eggs by five when you're buying, but the contract balance is hitting the contract balance directly. The new investments are hitting the contract balance directly. Um, you know, it's 97% there because it's three comes off for the dev fee. So it's a much higher proportionally uh, increase to the contract balance than it is to the market eggs variable. And I will go into this in more detail. But 
the result of that is obviously you get a lot fewer eggs when you buy. Um, so, you know, if, if, if the curve is going up, you're getting a lot fewer eggs until the market eggs variable has time to catch up. Um, in which point that, you know, you, you've better be accumulating, otherwise you're going to lose um, your eggs in, in one way or another. Um, all right, scenario six, declining contract balance. So what happens if the opposite of is happening? This is low new investment, but what happens if the contract balance is going actively down? All right, so let's say that the market eggs is still going up slowly because people are rebaking, whatever, but the contract balance is actually going down because people are taking deposits. Well, you're getting more eggs per BNB. So you can see that pattern emerging as, as we go. And then the last scenario, crashing contract balance. The market eggs is, is still going up by 10%, but the contract balance is absolutely crashing 60% below the previous um, period, whatever it happens to be. Well, the amount that you're getting is, is a lot more eggs per BNB. Um, so that, that's, hopefully that clarifies the buy side. Um, and we will look now at the sell side for these scenarios because I think that's pretty interesting. So what happens if there's a lot of new investments on the, um, the contractors we've seen? Well, let's say investments are growing by 30% above the previous period and market eggs are going up only by 10%. Again, this is the kind of scenario we're talking about in recent history because um, the contract balance goes up by... 97% of the investments but market eggs go up, up by you know approximately 20% just under 20% of um of um the rebake that's the one in five so that there is a gap between those two values um and then we expect a much we get a much higher daily return and you know again these figures are not exact figures they're not intended to be a representative of how much you actually get, because there are lots of factors that contribute to that. I'm just trying to compare, um, you know, the the performance uh, directly based on the number of investments. Sorry, based on the the value of the contract balance and the and um, market eggs based on how many new investments there are. All right, so the investments are lower. Um, you, we, you can look at these figures, but just the, the the main takeaway here: we've got investments are new investments are low, so that means the contract balance is not going up that much. The market eggs going up much higher. You can see the rate starts to drop. But what if the new investments are extremely high? Well, similar to this scenario, then the return rate goes up quite a lot, um, and the contract balance is declining. Well, you can see that um, that low investments in a declining goes down even further and when the contract balance crashes it goes down even further so this this is to reinforce i guess what i was saying in in the previous video when i was saying it, it makes sense to me to be selling while the um the contract is in a state of a lot of new investments a lot of money coming onto that contract balance because of this gap between the market eggs uh value and the contract balance. If this is outstripping it in the short term, then this rate goes up, you know. And, and the value of this rate, the the variance of this rate, is really difficult to calculate. Um, and I've I've spent a lot of time on a model that is not all there yet. Um, what I've done is take essentially um, all of the actual values off the the chain and try to to simulate, um, you know, the amount of eggs, the amount of rebake sold, held and try to, to kind of um, accurately model what's happening. But there's there's so much happening. There's so many variables. It's hard to account for things like um, referrals because we don't know what volume, how many people are abusing the referral system, how many just normal referrals there are, for example. And there's a lot of variables here that, that mean that it's, it's really difficult and almost impossible, I would say, to accurately um, simulate what's happening on the contract. But but again, looking at this, these scenarios it, the, and the relationship between um, these variables, the uh, I guess the story for me is pretty clear. And so let me summarize what that means and what I think um, you know the the factor is to consider here. So this slide talks about the relationship between market eggs and contract balance, you know, and summarizes basically what I've just spoken about. So. Number one, market eggs increases constantly with new investments and rebates. So we've spoken about the mechanisms under the contract that it does so. When you have a new investment or a rebate, it takes five, um, one fifth, 20% of those new investments or rebates and adds them to the market eggs value. When you sell, it takes the entire value of the, the sale 
and increases that um, market eggs even more. So that number is always going up. The relative value of your beans will decrease over time if you're not rebaking. So this is something that people always talk about and um, a criticism of my last video, and that's 100% true, that yes, if you're not rebaking, um, your beans over time do become devalued. And and the mechanism for that is through market eggs, basically. Um, the number of market eggs is always increasing. And if your beans, the number of beans that you're holding are not keeping up with market eggs, then you're decreasing your share, uh, essentially, of the, um, you know, of the, of the rewards. So, but there's a big but. And the but is at times when the contract is growing, contract balance is growing rapidly. So when you've got um, times like I've, I've mentioned in my last video, like right now, when you see that contract balance go up, you know, almost as a vertical, vertical line, the increase in the daily rate is proportionally higher due to the numerator, the contract balance increasing at a higher rate than the denominator, the market eggs, due to that one fifth multiplier. So if, if everyone is doing this six to one, um, baking, um, so rebaking five, six days, selling one day, um, you get essentially this one fifth multiplier. It could be even two fifths if if um if it's um being followed pretty close to that six one, but essentially you get that one fifth or two fifths uh, depending on what most people are doing as compared to the uh, contract balance which is going up at a ninety percent seventy percent ninety seven percent rate. You know, roughly at this point in the contract, there will be a time when the contract balance starts to decline and fall where that's not the case. But if you can just conceptualize this um, as a fraction, contract balance is growing. So the top part of this fraction is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The bottom part is not getting big at a as high a rate, which means that the overall number is getting bigger and bigger, right? So that's why to me, it makes more sense to be selling more and I'm not going to say sell every day. Uh, I, I, I said, I said, I, I, sorry, I'm not going to say eat every day. I said, I eat every day in my, um, in my last video in the thumbnail, because that's what I do. And, um, that may not be the best thing for you. I'm not telling you what to do and what you should and shouldn't do here. But what I'm saying is that as that contract balance is increasing, it makes more sense for me to capitalize on the increased rates that, I'm getting while that contract is is increasing and while the market eggs rate is not going up because there's a flip side to that as well. So conversely, when the contract balance is in decline, as it inevitably will be, the reverse of this will apply, which means that the numerator, the number up the top, will progressively decrease while the number down the bottom will progressively increase. And what happens when that happens is that your returns progressively get smaller and smaller. Right? So... Contract balance is going down. Market eggs is is always going up. So this will go up all the time as long as there's activity on the contract. You know, into into months or years, even into the future. This this market eggs will keep going up as people just rebake, 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 um, and this contract balance will continue to fall, 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 and that will result in increasingly diminishing returns. So, um. Let's take a look at, and I've said regardless of the, of the baking strategy. So let's let's take a look. This example here is actually from B and B Miner. This is the actual um, curve representing the B and B contract balance for B and B Miner, which um, is a, is a very similar to baked beans. Um, and you can see how this plays out. Like so, so here you've got this this huge increase, very similar to what we're seeing for baked beans. And you can see it, it hits this point where it really starts to diminish. Um, and the contract balance goes down very quickly over, you know, at first. And then over a long period of time, it um, kind of tails off and, and takes a long time to hit zero. And the reason is, you can imagine this is this market eggs line is just meant to represent where the market eggs are going in, um, in contrast, in correlation. So... The market eggs are also increasing with investments, but they're not, maybe not increasing as quickly when the contract balance is going up so quick. But they do continue to increase and increase and increase, and, and they don't stop increasing. And what happens here is that, um, you know, you get past this point of peak and the contract balance drops, market eggs goes up, 
and we look back at this at this formula, what happens? Contract balance is low, market exit is high. Your return when you sell gets lower and lower and lower. So this goes. This is really the point I'm making. It doesn't make sense to me to in this phase, which is tends to be pretty short lived on these um, on these contracts. Maybe last one week or two weeks. For in my view, this is where the value is. This is where you eat and you you maximize your you get as many returns as possible. Um, and if you're not eating every day, like you know, maybe you wanna you wanna eat every two. You wanna do like a one to one, like one day rebake, one day eat. I I don't know what the best strategy is. I'm not gonna uh, you know I, I don't know what the ideal absolute optimal strategy is because there's massive amounts of variables here. There's massive um, you know, there's things that can change. There's things that it really depends on how many new investments there are every day, things you just don't know. Um, so it, it's really difficult to say what is the optimal strategy. But what I will say is it doesn't make sense to me that the optimal strategy is not to eat during the time when um, the relative value of your beans is higher and the returns off your beans is, is progressively high, is higher um, in, in relation to market eggs. And, and bake for a time when returns are going to be lower. Um, so if you're spending this time in this period, um, rebaking, 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 um, you know, occasionally eating, but um, you're doing mostly rebaking, you're, you're kind of betting that you're going to get good returns over here. And in my view, those good returns are not going to come. And, and this is the flip side. Going back to um, the earlier slide, and I'll, I'll flick back up... Um, see if I can find it. I think it was this one. So talking about, about the value of market eggs and the fact that, that you need to keep rebaking uh, to make sure that your market eggs, um, your, your, you know, the number of beans that you have keeps up with this growing value of market eggs. That is absolutely true. But when you look at the at this kind of curve, you just remember that there is another side to the equation and that is the contract balance. And if the contract balance drops, which it will, uh, you know, inevitably will at some point, then that is going to have an impact on, um, you know, on, on your returns. And if you're saving those returns for a time when the contract balance is low, you're going to get lower returns regardless of how much you're baking and, and rebaking, um, you know, in, into the contract. Because this is, this kind of curve is a function of how the, um, of the contract works. It, it's not, it's not people being greedy. It's not people, um, you know, not baking often enough and, and that kind of thing. You know, we might see, you might see it just extend a little bit more if everyone is, is doing the right thing, but, but that doesn't increase the actual returns that people are going to get. And that doesn't increase the sustainability in terms of, you know, how much money it is and how many people kind of get paid. Because the fact is, if you imagine under the, um, the six to one plan, you're rebaking six days. You eat one one day. What um, the baked beans say in the documentation is that it'll take you six weeks to make your money back. So just imagine people who put all this money on the contract balance. Um, you know, six weeks later, they need to get paid, and those returns have got to come from somewhere. And those returns have come from the contract balance. And the way that that um, the algorithm controls those returns is to make sure that the returns go lower so that the contract balance doesn't run out and it takes a very long time to run out, but that doesn't equal sustainability. You know, once, once you hit this peak and, and new people are not going to, you know, keep coming on and keep coming on. It just, it's just unreasonable to expect this to grow exponentially until everyone in the world has, has been in baked beans. That's not going to happen. At some point you reach a peak and it cuts, it, it drops down and everyone is making less money um, on their investment. And for me, it makes a lot more sense to, um, to do the, the, the sells while you can early up, maximize your profits here. And then whatever you get afterwards, it, it doesn't really matter. So that's, that's my, um, thesis here. And that's my, my theory. It's again, it's a very complicated thing. It's, it's almost impossible to model. If you, if you're going to work out exactly what is the optimal strategy. It might be two to one. It might be three to one. It might be one to one. I don't know, but I can tell you that six to one just does not make much sense to me, given exactly where we are here in the growth um, uh, of, of the contract. And, and I want to emphasize that point because some of the comments on my last video was, Hey, I've tried eating every day and my, um, you know, my returns just drop down 
um, to really quickly. So don't do that. And I agree if you're here, if you're here and, and there's not, you know, little growth in the contract, um, but there is growth in market eggs, then you need to stay up with market eggs. But if the market eggs, you know, if the, if the contract balance is growing out, stripping market eggs, it just makes sense to me that this is the time you want to maximize your returns and get as much out as possible. And maybe, look, maybe that you do get more out of in the long term, if you're if you just keep investing here and and um, you know, eight or nine months, maybe you make the same amount. I don't know. The calculation is is almost impossible to do based on the amount of variables there are. But I'll say that I'd rather just make the money here than here. So that's um, that's what it comes down to. And and does that affect the um, sustainability of the project? You know, we get back to this question about community, and the community is going to keep this thing alive. Look, you, you just can't keep it alive. It it this this curve is a function of how how the um, um the contract works. You know, I've said it so many times. That it's it's Ponzi it's a Ponzi scheme. It's Ponzi nomics. The amount that gets paid out is only what's in the balance. Um, and and you've got all these people coming in, adding to the balance, and they're going to want to get paid. And this is just what happens to the balance. So this curve happens regardless of of the six to one, regardless of what people are doing on the contract. It's just you know, it's inevitable. This is this is going to happen. It's all about how you can um, make sure that you get your money back, and you're not one of the suckers who gets in here, and and starts only getting the low returns and never makes their money back. Because this is these these are the people who pay these people essentially. You know, there's going to be people who miss it miss out, and and I don't know what point in the curve that is. Maybe it's before the peak. Maybe it's after the peak. Again, you know, really difficult to calculate. But, um, you know, I, I, I want to be out of this thing with a profit uh, or I, I would, um, generally speaking in any investment, that's, that's, um, how I'd want to end up. And actually, I just want to show you one more thing from this spreadsheet, looking at the, the data, because I did, as I mentioned, pull out all of the data from the, um, uh, the chain itself. And I went through and I pulled out for every day, how much was in were their new deposits this is in BNB. What's the total invested and what is the contract balance? Because I, I, there's there's been, I guess the, the the term total value locked is is for me a bit misleading when people use it. Yeah, it, it's it's probably you know technically accurate that the, the contract balance is the total value locked, but don't forget that there is a value that is the total amount invested, and this is as of a few days ago, the fifth of um, of April. So the, the contract balance at that time was 10,400 BNB, um, and, but that's not the total amount that people have invested in the contract. And that total amount is 17,409. So just think about what this number represents, right? So that number represents the, the, the total amount of people who've clicked, baked beans, put their money in the contract um, and, and started getting that money out. What this represents is the amount that's left, okay? So... You've got to understand that people who invested earlier have made a lot of money and have, have drawn out a lot of this contract balance um, over the over the months, and it is absolutely inevitable that it will hit zero. So, you know, if you, if you have dreams of sustainability and and that this thing is just going to keep going, it's it's just not going to happen. You know, there's this there's there is this balance. There's this total amount of think about this as the principle of the investment, and this is how much there is to pay the principle of the investment. Okay. And the means that the, the contract has to control that is by lowering the rate of return until it's vanishingly small and you basically get nothing back. So don't, um, don't imagine that the, having saying, look, our TVL or, or our contract balance is really high. It's great. Just remember what that curve looks like. You know, contract balance looks great until all of a sudden you've got to pay back these people and it starts just dropping. Okay. So, so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that's pretty clear and you understand where I'm coming from when I'm, when I'm saying that it's, uh, it's not necessarily in your interest to do 6-1 at this point of the contract while there's, there's a massive amount of growth. You know, maybe in the past that was, that was the right way to do it. Maybe later that was the right way to do it. Based on this analysis, analysis based on my contract review, the code review, the, the looking at the, these, um, um, these figures, it's, it seems to me that there is some merit to the proposition that eating more during this phase uh, results in, in higher uh, profits. Okay, so I'm going to move on from this now and talk about 
I guess, addressing some of what I see as the myths and, and maybe some misinformation about um, BNB based on all of this work and all of this, this research. Um, and I'm going to just start with what does baked beans actually record about you? And this is uh, what you can find under in, in the in the contract code, uh, basically um, where there's a reference to the user's address. So baked beans knows uh, how many rewards or eggs that you've accumulated since the last sell. Uh, it knows who referred you. It knows the last time you baked or sold, and it knows how many beans or hatchery miners that you that you hold. Um, and the reason I want to point this out is because there is, you know, discussion about things like anti-whaling or anti-whale um, mechanisms within the contract. And, and what I've heard people say kind of implies that there is some sort of trigger for big um, sales or big investments, right? There's there's some method that, that um, Baked Beans knows that you're a whale and um, and, and if you sell, then then it, it kind of punishes you for that, that sale. Um, I just want to point out there is no anti-whale mechanism in in the code. There's nothing specifically that targets whales. Some some of these um, other um, what are they called the ROI apps they have anti-whale mechanisms and they basically say no, I'm not accepting any deposits over a certain amount. For example, there's nothing here that the, the algorithm is completely agnostic about the amount that is deposited on the contract. Um, the the only anti-whale mechanism applies it just under the, the this exact same uh, algorithm that we've talked about the relationship between market eggs and the contract balance so if you are a whale and you um, sell your returns are, are adjusted in the same way as they are for everyone else the only difference is if you're a whale and and say you hold a large number uh, percentage of the contract balance when you sell sell you can have a real effect on the contract balance um, and that actually affects everyone, right? Because everyone uses this same algorithm um, to determine their sell. So just so, just say a whale sells a small uh, portion of their holdings, but that represents a um, you know significant part of the contract balance, and it takes takes a slight hit. That actually affects everyone, not just not just the whale. So this is calling this an anti-whale mechanism for me seems a little bit. Uh, of a stretch. So this is, a, I don't know if this is misinformation or just kind of marketing spin pushed to its limits. This is not in any way preventing whales um, from, from um, you know, using the contract. It's just, it's just applying really the same rules to everyone. Um, yeah, I, I would say it's different from other ROI apps where if, you know, people take money directly off the contract balance um, without this algorithm and it, and it drops to zero, that's not really a whale thing. That's just the fact that people got in earlier than you. And that's still the case with, with this. People get in earlier than you. They're a lot better off. Um, so that really doesn't change. If you got in too late, you're going to lose money. That doesn't change. Um, you know, all it does is is prolong, you know, think of it one way, it prolongs the pain. So rather instead of, instead of running out of money like this, as other ROI apps do, this one kind of just keeps giving you less and less over time. Um, until it eventually gets to uh, to zero, you know, many many months down the track. So, you know, when people talk about um, um, baked beans as as having you know really good longevity or or um, sustainability, this is this is I guess what they're talking about. It's going to take a long time for that balance to drain to zero. Um, I guess the the other thing I wanted to address as as part of this is just looking at this this graph. Um, and you can see this in the analytics as well. If you go to the contract and click on the analytics uh, tab, because people have been saying, oh, baked beans has been going for months and months and it, it's been sustainable. I just want to point out that's that's a little bit of a kind of an inaccuracy, a bit of a stretch. We're talking about the contract being initiated here on the 6th of uh, November last year. And the balance staying really low, really flat, generating not much returns until basically the beginning of February. So now we now the contract has been open for a couple of months and and it's well I should say it's been growing for a couple of months this is really the point where where we can talk about sustainability and how long the contract has been around is when it's when there's actual money hitting the contract balance and growing so you know in my mind it's 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 been around more or less for a couple of months but the peak is either here or is or is um yet to come very soon from then we will see a decline as we do uh for all of these uh style of apps Okay, 
so that's that's just a clarification around what the anti-whale mechanism is and what um, the contract does and does track about you. There's no kind of individual tracking of, of what you're doing or, or how much um, you know, you're putting in or if you're a whale or not. It's all just in that same uh, algorithm that applies to everyone. All right. I just wanted to spend some time now also responding to some of the points in the FAQ because having done this research and investigation and then looking back at the the FAQ, I don't know if I agree with everything. So, um, okay. So what is the price of beans? So beans don't have a set price. Higher TVL means more be beans per B and B. Lower TVL means less bean uh, beans. It creates a level playing field. So no user can be late. There is no calculator available to work this out. Um, so point of clarification. Yeah, that, that's pretty much correct um, most of the time. So just I take some issue with the use of TVL because it implies, like if you talk about TVL for, for an, any investment that's not a Ponzi scheme, the TVL tends to be uh, available to people. Like people can unlock that value or get a return on that that um, value. Remember the TVL is actually, well, say the amount of um, investment is actually much higher than the contract balance. So the contract balance is actually what matters, not the total value that people have put into it. So that's just a, in my mind, a slightly misleading statement that maybe is um, just needs a bit of clarification. So higher balance is more beans per BNB. So that's generally true. But as we look at that algorithm, there are times when there's a huge growth in the balance that is uh, higher out of proportion to the um, the baseline market eggs value. And at that time, um, that that is not exactly true. So there are exceptions. So the, so the playing field is not exactly level as demonstrated. When the contract balance is growing quickly, the value of earlier purchases outstrips, tends to outstrip new purchases. And I'm talking about specifically this period here being what I see as an exception to that rule. All right, what are beans? Uh, beans are the miners that are hired with BNB and work to get your awards. This is just a term we decided to use. Crypto OGs will know beans as BNB. This is misleading to me. I don't understand what they're trying to say here, but beans are not BNB. Um, you know, beans are this miner and they use the term miner here. And I've always, as I've looked into to beans and other um, versions of this, this kind of contract, this term has always just been extremely misleading. Miners, um, we're not, there's no mining here. This is not proof of stake. It's not proof of work. Um, you know, we've got miners, we've got eggs, we've got beans. It's really confusing terminology. I don't think that this, this FAQ does really much to, um, you know, explain what's going on. Uh, it does a few things to really confuse the point. And one of these is this comment here that beans are BNB. Beans are not BNB. All right. So these three points to the side, why might be my rewards not growing? What happens if I always eat? Is rebaking more often better two or three times a day? So I'm just saying here, generally true, but there are many factors that may affect it. In my view, 6-1 is not always the best strategy. And in my view, that may be the case when the balance is growing faster than the rebake rate. Or maybe that should say growing faster than the um, than the market eggs rate. All right. So how come my referrals aren't showing? Where are they? So your referrals show up in the My Rewards section of the Miner app. That's true. Referrals are 12% of the 3% dev fee. So no, the, the referrals are 12, actually 12.5% 12 of each deposit and each rebake. So uh, as I called out earlier, these are really high referrals in my view. And um, for the people who've worked this out in the past, I'm no doubt they have referred themselves and are making a, a ton of money off the contract balance. And this is, you know, another reason why it's hard to actually model the contract and estimate because you don't know how many people are actually doing this um, uh, and taking advantage of it. But um, in my last video, I, I commented that I don't think that that referrals are, um, you know, impacting what I'm getting on my, um, in my account, in my rewards, because, you know, first of all, I don't usually get that many referrals talking um, crap, as people like to say about, about uh, these contracts. Or, you know, my view is just telling you what they actually do. Uh, a lot of people don't um, tend to, to invest after I do that. So 
uh, I tend to view my referrals as being low. And the reason I said that I don't think that's a, the case is because here he say you know, referrals are 12% of the 3% del- dev fee. That's a tiny amount. They're not. They're 12.5% of each deposit and each rebate. A huge amount. This is not sustainable in my view. This is the opposite of sustainability. So what are the fees? 3% taken on all deposits and 3% on withdrawal. Correct. But this last... Um, comment just when I read that just didn't seem to make sense. Like standard BSC network gas fees required for every transaction made withdrawals and rebakes. Common issue when rebaking is no gas fees. I guess what they mean is, is make sure you have gas um, in your, you know, BNB in your account when you rebake, otherwise it'll fail. But kind of re a misreading of this might be that there's no gas fees when rebaking, which is, which is not true. So giving them the benefit of the doubt, but it's uh, could use some editing. There is, there's not, um, um, you know, much to, so it's not very clear. Okay. Is this sustainable? Yes, as long as there are TVL in the contract, then there will be always be rewards. The hungry people who eat as much get punished and get lower and lower rewards. It will last a long time uh, the higher the TVL is. Well, okay. So they're using contract balance for TVL there. And yeah, I agree. This contract will last a very long time if the contract balance is high. That's like saying your Ponzi scheme is going to last forever as long as people keep putting money into it. Um, you know, I understand it's not that, that simple and, you know, there's some nuance here. So I've said questionable, depending on your definition of sustainable, it will definitely last longer than the, the more new investments, um, are coming on. And yes, the algorithm will present, prevent the contract from reaching zero quickly by generating extremely low returns when the balance is low and market eggs is extremely high. Remember that graph that I showed you. Um, and this may be, you know, you might call that still alive and sustainable, but in reality, it's paying out very small returns and many people will fail to make back their initial investment. So it is it is Ponzi based and the total paid out can only be equal to the total put in. So regardless of all these calculations, I want you to just remember that, right? So the the what's on the balance is everything. You know, you, you can't have people putting money into this balance taking more than what they get back in and expecting it to just keep having money in it somehow. That's just not how it works. It's it's going to run out um, and it's going to run out, you know, whether you make your money or not back through the 6-1 thing. So in my view, it doesn't make sense to kind of put your your money and your, or you put your hopes in, in, in a kind of Ponzi-based scheme, hoping that you'll eventually get your money back and, you know, getting upset when people don't decide to do this 6-1 this or... or take advantage of it in some other way guys it's, it's going to run out it's it's not it's not sustainable for the long term um sustainable for the long term to you might mean this where you get really really small returns um you know and there's just no way of, of getting your money back maybe maybe you call that sustainable but that doesn't seem sustainable to me all right what's the best strategy they want to do six um six to one they've said six to eight weeks i've just said look Best strategy, I think, is is to to um, do what works for you. To look at how the contract works and try to understand uh, what you're getting into and making an informed decision. They don't really provide any of the information that I provided here on how this thing actually works. It's it's not it's not available on the website. It's not available really anywhere. You can ask questions. All, all the all the FAQs are really vague. So, um, you know, in my view, it's always best to, to be informed and not to just kind of trust what people say. Uh, is it too late to invest? No, the contract is written to provide optimal entry for any and all investors, new or old. Well, I, I kind of disagree with that. So I would say yes. Um, as we talked about when we looked at the contract, there are a lot of features in here that, that mean that um, you're not penalized as much for joining in late. But there is a massive advantage if you got in early, like a like of course you're gonna you're gonna still make huge amounts of money. So you get in here, you're making money out um, constantly, especially if you're rebaking in this early period, you're making money. But if you get in here, um, just imagine what that looks like, right? So your market eggs keep going up, your contract balance keeps going down. So no matter how much you rebake, you're never going to get back the same, your, your, your return rates are always going to be constantly dropping. So this may be true all the way up to here. Yeah. You're, you're still okay. You're still going to make your money back if you're, if you're getting in at this point, especially if you're, 
uh, carefully considering how best to um, get your investment return. Um, but if you're getting in here, no matter how much you rebake, that contract balance is going to keep dropping. That market eggs is going to keep keep going up. And you know what? Market eggs might even keep going up more and more because people are just frantically rebaking, rebaking, rebaking. Your payback period is going to extend. It's going to take you years, if ever, to get money back. So this is not what sustainability means, in my opinion, that that things just take years and years to, to get your your investment back. That doesn't that doesn't make sense to me. All right. Um all right, where were we? Is it too late to invest? Okay, what prevents the devs from from rugging? Um, look, I I pretty much agree with this. This is I've I've said in my past videos. There's no issues with the uh, with baked beans in terms of how the contract balance. Uh, sorry, in, in terms of how the contract code is set up, it looks fine. It's it seems to be verified. Um, you know, it's basically a fork of other uh, contracts, so no issues there. I have read the audit in the past, and the audit does focus on security. All good there. I'll just call out that there is no link to the audit on the website. There's there's basically nothing on the Baked Beans website. Like, you know, it would have been great if they could even add a link to their other website. They've got another website around the BSC token. Um, sorry, the um, BTC token or the BCT token. I'll lose track of what all these tokens are called. But they don't. So if you're just getting to the Baked Beans, all you have is the Telegram link, the Twitter link, and they expect you to go into Telegram and ask for the FAQ or the FAQ you know, pops up. You can find that in there, but, but it's not really easily accessible. The contract you need to, to really search, sorry, the, the audit you need to really search for, um, and it's not, not there. So no issues around security. As always, I recommend going directly with the... Um, with the contract, interacting directly with the contract rather than the website. But look, in this case, they update the website so infrequently, I'd be surprised if they pulled any shenanigans there. Okay, does it have an M anti-whaling mechanism? <laughs> Before I go on, I just want to point to all of these issues with the documentation. These guys always point to like marketing being where they're putting the, um, the dev fees and the marketing is always so terrible. So does it have an anti-whaling mechanism? I've already talked about this. It's misleading. There's no anti-whale. There's no, there's no um, mechanism that punishes people for having for for, um, or even you know knows that the people have larger investments than others. The only um, mechanism is the same one that uh, applies to everyone in terms of the the um, the growing uh, market eggs rate and the fact that you do need to rebake to to maintain that um, and. If a whale does somehow like accumulate a lot of eggs uh, over time and without rebaking and they, they pull out a whole lot in one go, they don't get punished for that. They, they, they essentially, everyone gets punished for that because the contract balance drops. So it's, it's kind of a weird thing to call an anti-whale mechanism. Um, and, um, but look, it is, it is what it is. It's, you want to call it that, that's, that's fine. I, th I think that's, that's kind of a bit misleading. All right. Um, so the next piece. Now I wanted to address a specific question or a specific comment that I've heard, and that is, well, um, these other apps that that you're talking about that you've looked at in the past, the egg egg game and um, BNB Miner. Yeah, they're similar, but they're not the same. Um, Beans is built differently. It's 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 got features. It's got an anti whale mechanism. It's got all these things that are are mentioned in the FAQ and people like to to talk about. You know, it's got a great community. It's got all of this this thing. Um, I wanted to look at the code, right? I wanted to kind of just just be really um, clear and settle it. And I've done this comparison in, in other videos, but I think the comparison is is more. Um, you know, it drives home a little bit harder once you've seen the contract code and you can actually interpret some of these things. So first of all, let's have a look at the one that started all. This is this is eggs on the left, BNB minor on the right. So you can see the differences between um, those two as highlighted here by Notepad++. Um, they've changed the name. They've changed the number of um, eggs required to hatch miners between eggs and BNB minor. They've changed, obviously, the contract address. You go through. There's not much else that the the market started starting market eggs value is changed, and they're exactly the same. So BNB miner you'd say is a, is a straight clone of eggs. Um, 
Now let's compare B and B minor with uh, with baked beans. All right. So now we have B and B minor on the left and baked beans on the right. So you can see there's they've added their little um, ASCII baked beans here. They're using the the Safe Math library here. Uh, I think an updated version. If you look at B and B minor on the left, they're also using that too, but they've just got it at the end, right? So um, functionally, that doesn't make a difference. They're just using different set of maths libraries to do calculations. So you know, potentially, we've got some improved security and logic uh, around the the um, those libraries, but they're they're functionally not actually making any change to how it, how it operates. Okay, and over here we've got under B and B minor, we're just calling out all the variables, um, you know, defining what those starting constants and variables are for the the um, the project. And you can see that these values, the PSN and PSNH, are identical. The um, eggs to hatch miners are different. They've they basically changed that. I think in an attempt to to maybe slow down um, the growth, but you know, reality it doesn't make a a functional difference. Um, you can see that on the left and on the right, they've just put it in a different place in the code. So it's not really a difference. They've just put that, all those variables down here. Okay. And so then we look at the functional differences or rather the differences um, to the functions themselves in, in the code, the pieces of code that actually do something. Um, and really here, you can see that there's no difference. So we've got... Um, uh, just a difference in the way that the, the sender address is recorded here as, as zero as opposed to address zero. We've got some um, spacing and some formatting like extra spaces all in these things. But if you look, you know, the way that this block timestamp is coded instead of instead of using the now um, uh, function or, or word, whatever that is. And over here, you know, some extra spaces. But functionally, there's nothing that's different. We're using now, time block stamp. We're using CEO address instead of um, the record add for the transfer fee. Um, we're just, we've just got kind of the same thing um, in both of these. We're using the transfer function here. We're using it over here as well. The only key, real difference is this bean rewards function. And you'll notice I haven't mentioned this in any of the the analysis and that's because this is not actually called by the um, the the contract for any of its uh, functions this is actually just called by the website to tell you how much um, BNB is only owing uh, on your eggs essentially so what that means um, let's see if I can switch back to this if we go back to baked beans you can see your rewards here that generates this amount here um and so that's what this is for so they've added this and then if you look further down you can see left and right functionally there are no differences the value of market eggs here is um on the initialized function is different um but functionally they are exactly identical and on the left here you can see safe math so I want to point out that there is no special source in baked beans that is not in uh, the crypto egg game or um, BNB miner. They are functionally identical. The only differences are around the, the variable of really the, the starting value of um, the market eggs variable and the starting value of the number of um, eggs to hatch one miner. So those are different and they may result in slightly different curves and slightly different um, uh, lifespans, durations. But in, in the end, the payout, the 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 formula, the 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 um the algorithm that is followed here is identical. There's no extra um, anti whale function. I watched one video. I was trying to research this anti whale function. I found a video that was like, oh, the the um the anti whale function for baked beans explained and the guy just opened the code and pointed to it and said, there's an anti whale function in there. There's no anti whale function in uh, baked beans that is not in these other ones that it's in B and B minor and eggs. There's no bit of code extra function that is in there that is in baked beans that is not here. So I want to make that absolutely clear because I want to point out then the history of these other apps, right? And we talk about sustainability. Um, what is different in baked beans uh, as compared to these other ones. 
Now we've seen that the code is practically identical. There's no functional difference. So I think it's, it's a mistake to deny that this is going to happen very in a very similar way to baked beans, right? So we have the history of, of the egg game um, and we have a, an increase. We have a period of growth and look, this hit a balance of almost 2000 BNB. That's pretty strong. And then kind of a decline when, when um, uh, you know, either the interest ran out or, or, or people stopped putting money into it or even people kept putting money into it. It's, it's really hard to tell from this that people keep putting money into it. Probably this keeps going up. But the fact is you've got to pay all of these people here. And so the contract balance starts dropping. It's the curve that, that we see here. And you'll see a very similar curve here for the B and B minor and a similar story being told. The um, uh, We hit a peak and then things start to drop. And it's going to be a similar story for baked beans, right? And remember back to the earlier graph where I, I basically took this graph and added to it, added um, a representation of... Um, of the market rate of eggs, because that's always going up. And and when we're up to this point in the contract, the returns are getting really low, vanishingly low. Maybe this keeps maybe this keeps going out. Look at this this look at this time frame: November, December, from December to April, basically flat contract balance. That means that people are just not getting payouts out of this thing, and that's exactly what you'd expect. So you know, once again, to drive the the point home, why would you? delay your um, returns at this point to a point when they're going to be lower. You can control the ratio of um, of beans that you hold to the total value of um, the, the, um, the market eggs variable, but you can't control the contract balance. And once that drops, you're out. That's it. You're not getting, you're, you're not getting returns. So it doesn't make sense to me. I've said that this is probably like the 20th time I've said it. It doesn't make sense to me to defer your gains here to here when you're not going to get gains. So take that as uh, make of that as you will and, um, you know, make your own financial decisions. This is not financial advice. Obviously, you can see the scroll at the top of the screen that's been telling you that for um, uh, probably an hour and a half now. But um, this is my view. This is my view. Okay, so we're getting there. Um, next thing I want to talk about is the BCT token. And I'm not going to say too much on it because I did a, a video on it. Um, and my thoughts haven't really changed. And fundamentally, it, it boils down to two things. Number one is, um, is the, is the token worth investing in, in itself? Like, is there a value proposition for a new investor wanting to buy BCT getting any, you know, getting a return on that. And from what I've seen, look, I don't see the value proposition. I've chosen not to invest in it. Other people have, that's, that's a decision for people to make, but it's, it's a token that kind of takes out a, a, a cut on um, withdrawal, uh, sorry, on, on deposit and another one when you, when you withdraw and it puts that into, um, into baked beans, right? So number one, I don't quite understand how that's a good deal for an investor. Uh, I'm aware of like Titano and others that do a similar thing, but they put, they put their, um, um, their fees. Well, actually, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. It, it, it's, it just doesn't seem like it's, it's generating any value uh, for an investor. It's a really shaky proposition. That's, that's number one. Number two, 5% of deposits and 5% of um, withdrawals. And I think the withdrawals are also like it's incentivized not to withdraw often. So, you know, 5% of deposits on a pretty shaky token, how much of that do you think is going to cover um, what what is going to be owed on baked beans? So you're going to get to a stage, I mean, this is this is BNB minor and um, we've got 8K of... Um, of BNB on that one. I think baked beans as of today, maybe 13, maybe 14,000 um, BNB. And when this curve drops and you've got, may maybe it's 20,000 BNB by that point, maybe it's 30,000. How on earth are you going to pay, um, add significantly enough to this contract balance to keep this thing going? In my view, this BTC token or BCT, sorry, I always mess that up because BTC is Bitcoin. This BCT token 
in my view, is not even worth talking about. Like, it's going to do nothing, in my view. You, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it turns out great. In my view, looking at these numbers and looking at the kind of gap in um, uh, between the, the total amount invested and the, the, the balance that needs to be paid off, as I said right now, that, that gap alone is more than 7,000 um, BNB. And, and that's not going to be paid by 5% of deposits from some other contract that has questionable, um, you know, utility to an investor. So for me, it's a non-starter. And look, if I was being cynical, I'd say it's, it's a, it's a cash grab. Like, you know, why not get some more money uh, out of people and we'll say we're doing uh, a good thing for this, um, uh, for, for baked beans. We're going to keep it going. It's going to keep going forever, guys. It's going to be great. It's, for me, it's disingenuous, right? So I don't think there's any um, any value there. And I guess, look, these are my final thoughts that, that I'll, I'll leave you with. Um, I really, look, I understand wanting to get into a, a community and, and, and in liking, you know, a community and saying, like, I want to be part of a community. I think we we can build a community and, and make a product that people believe in and have it stick around for the long term. I think that's a valid thing with, with some smart contracts. You know, I'll, I'll take, you know, some examples of sustainable ones, like take Anchor Protocol on Terra Luna, for example. That's a, that is a protocol that has, that is not a Ponzi scheme, that is based on real growth, um, that has a, that has a bright future ahead of it. And I think it's great to have a community that believes in that and wants to build it for the future and thinks that, that they want to, you know, they want to grow it. They want to tell people about it. That's, that's, that's a great thing. There are some um, blockchains that people love and people see a future in and they, they think they're doing great things and they want to see them grow. And those things are sustainable. They are things that will grow and have actual value. But what I don't understand um, and I, I won't get behind is creating a community and and believing in a community based on a Ponzi scheme, right? So you have something here in in baked beans and, and the, the owner and the devs have said like, this is sustainable. This is great. Um, and I think, you know, most people, maybe most people, hopefully most people are slightly cynical about that. And they say, well, look, uh, I, I know it's a Ponzi scheme. I know it's not going to be around forever. And so, you know, I'll invest, um, and I'll make some money and that's great. That's, that's what I hope most people are doing, but I do keep hearing people, who are like true believers in this thing. And look, of course you make your own financial decisions. And if you want to believe um, what people tell you about sustainability, and if you want to believe things are going to be around, and if everyone just does six one, then then here we're going to be here in years time, like reaping our, our um, benefits from, from beans. Like that's totally up to you. But I think once like you understand that, that it is a Ponzi, that, that the money coming out is just the same as the money coming in, like that there are going to be people, a lot of people that lose out. And all the people who invest down here or even here, we don't know where it's going to be in the curve for, um, uh, for baked beans, all of those people will lose out. So I'm not saying that there's, there's not money to be made here, but, I'm, but there's something really disingenuous to me about, um, you know, people, especially the contract owner, who, who must know what this is, right? They must know that people are going to lose out, that it's going to eventually um, cave. And, you know, sooner than later, it's going to it's going to hit this peak and it's going to start declining. There, there is no way that this can keep going. Um, and, and I wouldn't, you know, I don't necessarily need it to go forever, but there's there's no value being added to this this amount. It's just the BNB that comes in is the BNB that comes out. It's still the same Ponzinomics where if you get in early, you're going to make a lot more money. If you get in late, you're not going to make a lot more money. There's some really cool features here that prevent like the contract balance from crashing quickly. Um, that that you know try to compensate people for for getting in later. And all those things are really cool. But this is not. In my view, this is not something to get behind and build a community behind. And I'm really, more than anything, I'm really confused about people who who were like um, believing in this thing and and thinking it's going to be um, providing passive income for a long time. I mean, it it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like a, that that uh, you know, either they're 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 convinced by the marketing spin and and they've been misled in my my view. 
or they're just trying to mislead others um, because it, it's clearly not sustainable. Like it just can't be sustainable. I, I don't want to repeat myself again and again, but like, look at this, look at this. This is the same code. You're, it's the same code that you can actively, you can just go and look at it and see what happened. And if you think it's going to be different this time around, then there has to be a reason why. And and the reason why is has got nothing to do with with the contract. Like it just it just doesn't make sense, right? You can talk about six one, you can talk about like having it stay alive for a long period of time, but this is what sustainability means. Sustainability means that the contract balance drops, returns get lower and lower and lower, and people who invested too late lose their money. Exactly the same like as any other Ponzi scheme. And it and it, it just it's it seems to me like a real shame that people believe in it. Um, are, you know, hyping it up, uh, telling other people that they're doing the wrong thing by not going in the 6-1, um, you know, mindset and, and uh, getting money out um, quicker, like they're doing that, they're destroying the community. There's no community. There's, there's no, there's any amount of, well, just that there is a community, but no amount of community is going to keep this thing alive. It just, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't make sense. That's not what it does. Okay. So, so as always, I, I would I would advise you, I would recommend, you know, do your own research, actually understand how these things work. Don't go on um, what people tell you. Don't go on what the devs say. Like, look, the, the devs make 3% of, um, uh, of the deposits each way. Of course, they want to keep this thing going. Of course, they want to say what they need to say. And I'm not saying that they're, they're flat out lying. That, as people have called out, they've mentioned that they're trying to move away from the Ponzinomics, that they're that all of this kind of thing, but you can't move away from the Ponzinomics on baked beans. It's a, it's an immutable contract. It is what it is like, you know, BCT is not going to change that in my view. Um, so, you know, of course, believe what you want, of course, invest in what you want. Um, but you know, in my view, I don't think it makes sense to be a cheerleader for this and, and, and be like a person who's like, you know, we can do it. It's, it's, it's a, it's a community. It just doesn't make sense to be community minded about a Ponzi scheme. That should be a self-evident statement, but for some reason, it's a highly controversial statement, um, in the DeFi world. And all of this to stay, say, look, you might, you might sit back if the, you know, the, the one or zero of you who have made it this far into a, into a almost two hour long video. Um, you might say, oh, this guy's just been trashing baked beans for, um, for two hours. Like, why does he hate it so much? I'm not trashing baked beans. I, I've, I've, I've said the same thing about everything I talk about on, the, on my channel. I've talked about Ponzi scheme apps, ROI apps that are, are just pure Ponzi schemes, pure Ponzinomics. And I say the same thing, like, look, you, you can make money out of these. You can, you have to understand what you're doing, like invest, understand the risk, understand what you're doing. I think, I think from an, like an ethical perspective, the way I'm, I'm doing things is like the only, well, for me, it's, it's an ethical way of doing things. I'm not, I'm not telling people, Hey, invest in this because it's, it's, it's got a great community and it's going to be around for ages. I'm telling you like, look, it's got some good features. It's got some bad features. It's not going to be around forever. You can probably make money, make your own decision. I'm telling you what I'm, what I, what I honestly think about these things and how I've researched, they actually work. I'm not just hyping it up. So I'm not sure what you guys think my incentive is for like, you know, bashing these, um, uh, these contracts as, as, as people have said, like I'm, I'm bashing beans. This is not bashing. This is just, this is actually saying how they work, what the risks are, how you can lose money, how you can make money. And, and that's it. Like everything else is just, um, uh, I, I don't know. It's completely beside the point, if nothing more, you know? Um, obviously make your own decisions, make your own financial decisions, understand what you're doing. In my view, don't be a cheerleader for Ponzi schemes. Um, you know, be intelligent, be smart about what you invest in. Um, and that's basically, basically it. So look, very long video. I don't expect that, uh, anyone has watched it, but, um, I got a lot out of the research. I learned a lot of things about baked beans and, uh, look, even about, um, about solidity, the, the, the language that um, these Ethereum blockchain apps are coded in. So 
it was good use of time in my view and I wanted to get this out um, after the last video and the, the response the last video goes um, that got. So hopefully this clears up a lot of things. Hopefully you got some benefit out of it. Let me know in the comments if you've got any, um, you know, if I've, if I've, if I've, you know, completely missed the point on a lot on anything, but I'll tell you what, there's a lot of content in here. So likely if, um, if, if I have, I've, I've mentioned it elsewhere in the video, but, um, anyway, let me know and, um, I'll see you in the next video.